Hello everybody, this is Tekka. KDE Plasma is what we're going to be talking about. Today is the release date for their Plasma 5.25, and they're deeming this as the most feature-packed KDE Plasma release ever. This update includes the new overview effect, which we talked about in a previous video, basically giving you the GNOME shell experience within Plasma. There's a new floating dock that we're going to be diving into and so much more to cover. Just how the sponsor of this video covers all my hosting and Linux server needs. The node is my one stop shop for anything I need in the cloud. I use it for our main website, the next cloud instance that I use to manage this YouTube account. For pros, you can spin up whatever Linux distro you're comfortable with and get to work. Or if you need a simple solution, they have a huge list of apps within their marketplace. I actually have a video over on the Linode YouTube channel walking through how to set up your very own Discourse forms. Discourse is super cool and a lot of popular organizations use it. And like always, head down to the description, click the link, or go to linode.com forward slash tech hut to get a hundred dollar 60 day credit. So with that, let's jump onto the computer and run through the changes, additions, and improvements. All right, so we are on our system here. And one thing I'm going to note before we get started is I did everything I could to try to get uh, KDE Neon to install on this virtual machine, but it just wouldn't for nothing, at least the unstable branch. Grew to Linux using uh, KDE Git worked perfectly fine, so that's what we are currently in. Wouldn't recommend running this as your like main thing, but it's definitely cool to throw in a virtual machine because this is a few days before the actual release. And you can see here we are running Plasma 5.25, the latest version of KDE Plasma. Lots of cool things to cover real quick. We're gonna touch on some of the big ones. Now, first things first is they have new blend mode. So for example, if we go over to configure desktop, before when you select a new wallpaper, you have to select it, hit apply, and it just flashes and changes. Now, if we go over and select them, it kind of does a smooth transition similar to how uh, GNOME or GNOME does it. Now that's supposed to go with the colors and the themes and all that, but that's still kind of an immediate change. So we'll see if that's introduced across the system later on, but, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, another thing, and we covered this in the past, and that is the overview mode. Basically, uh, GNOME is what I like to call it. Windows key W brings over the, uh, or brings open the overview mode. You can see I have multiple desktops here. And for example, if I'm to open a couple different things and then go Windows key W, we can see all of our windows, just like you can on the GNOME shell. You go ahead and drag these to different ones. You can't drag them from one to the other quite yet, but you can add more. And of course you can search for things. So if I go Firefox, I could go ahead and open it up from here and I can close some windows. So let's say I don't want that and I want to go to discover. That's one way to access it. And it's not by default, but what I usually like to do is and make it enable when you throw your mouse up into the top. I would do it now, but it's kind of interfering with this uh, virtual machine. So right now I have it off to the side. If I run this here, you'd see it enables the overview. So that's pretty snazzy. If you did want to do that, you would just go over here into settings and you would go to workspace behavior screen edges, and then you would configure it here and just set it as overview and then apply it. So with that, another cool change is within Discover. Discover has been ever so slowly actually becoming a, a decent piece of software. Uh, for example, let's go into Caden Live here. You can see the actual application page has been slightly redesigned. Overall, it looks better. We have some screenshots here. If we go down, we have these big buttons that will take you to the documentation, the project website. We have some uh, not not so not so good reviews. Now here's a good one. It is really a good app. It has its flaws, but Caden Live is a good app. Uh, if you go down here, get involved, options to donate, uh, report bugs, and of course we can uh, show the dependencies, and it gives you a rundown of the permissions that it requires. So really nice, slight redesigns from the. Uh, people who work on Discover. Speaking of redesigns, if we go into the settings, the system settings, and we go into appearance and global theme, this has had a slight redesign. And it's from here, I wanted to go ahead and bring your attention to colors. There have been some big changes. One is you can use the color from your current wallpaper. The current selection isn't a good one. So if I go from current, you can see how it's like pulling this uh, light tan grayish color. But if I go ahead and switch my wallpaper, so let's configure 
And for example, let's say we wanted this shell one right here. Give that an apply. And now if we select from current wallpaper, you can see it's purple. And if I apply that, you can see how it changes there. And if we undo that real quick, hit apply, and watch again, you can see the uh, blend effect that it was talking about. If I click apply, you can see that nice transition from uh, blue to purple. Now that alone is pretty cool, but something that's even cooler, I think, is tinting. I'm gonna switch it to this path wallpaper and actually kind of build something that I would at least previously have to go and get a theme for. So I selected that wallpaper and I didn't apply it. That's one thing you still have to do. It kind of tricks you now because you select it and it changes. So you think it's applied, but it's not. So you do still have to click apply. And you can see with that applied, it automatically changed my accent color to match the wallpaper because that's the current selection. Now I've kind of already been playing with this. You could see some custom ones. I have breeze dark green and breeze dark, but I'm gonna show you how to do that real fast. First things first, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to breeze dark just because that's my preference. And now what I'm gonna do is add a slight green tint to literally everything. And to do that, you're gonna to want to go under colors and then you're gonna to want to go to the one you're currently using or any of these other color kind of preset options that you want to go ahead and modify. Let's say I want to modify breeze dark here. I would just hit the edit go under options and here we have tint all colors with accent color. Here we have the tint strength. So over here would be incredibly dramatic. This you'd barely see. So I'm gonna go about here. Now we can save this as, and this is breeze dark green. And I'm just gonna add a two because I was playing around with this, hit okay. Now, if we close this out, you can see breeze dark green too. Since I just created it, it's automatically selected. So all I need to do is go and hit apply. And then you can see a nice little green tint that's gone over just about everything. And the, this is really nice because like, because this is really how I just like to theme it anyways. And now I don't even need to go out and do that. I could just mess with the configuration and get the perfect look that I want. Now from there, that brings us to my next favorite thing that they added, and that is a floating dock. It doesn't look like it right now, but all we need to do is right click on it, enter the edit mode, and then from here, we're gonna want to go over to more options. And then right here, we have floating panel. If you give that a select, you can see it kind of pops up. I'm not seeing any options to configure the actual gap at the moment. I'm really looking forward to when and if that is added. But if I go over here, let's make that a little translucent and perfect. So if we go close out of edit mode, you can see the dock is now floating. And one thing that's really cool about it is it'll automatically go back to not floating if you full screen a window like that. So then it just doesn't look weird. And then if I pull this and take that away, you can see it jump right back to floating. Now, unfortunately, since this is a desktop, there is going to be quite a few things that I can't really cover because there's been some significant changes to touchscreen displays touchpad for laptops. So I do recommend you check out the release notes for those. One change that's pretty cool is the containment management feature. And this will allow you to move containments or your combination of desktop and panels in between monitors, even if they've been disconnected. So that's really nice for the people who utilize those features. And there's even been more. So if I go right click, I go into enter edit mode, more options, you kind of saw this, you could add shortcuts if you'd like to through here. So that's nice. Overall, this is a pretty big update with some very warm welcome things, at least in my opinion. And of course, again, if we go over here, we can go to about our system and see what version we're running. This is 5.25. This is an X11 Wayland was the default, at least on this system, but I changed it because I was having some stuttering. It had to do with the VMware, not the system. But yeah, I'm really, really I'm really enjoying this so far. I, I really like this. Now this isn't everything. There are even more features of improvements for touchscreen monitors and many changes under the surface, resulting in a complete rewrite of both present windows and the desktop grid. And I want to give a special shout out to Niccolo. I'm, I hope I said that right. For his work on the floating panel and sending over the press kit that made this video possible. He has a YouTube channel and it is one that you definitely need to be subscribed to if you have any interest in KDE projects or even Linux in general. And while you're down there, expand that description with the links to the changelog announcements and my initial video checking out that overview mode. There'll be a link to that Linode video. And with that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.